Uh, at the moment, I am. Uh, I'll put this as a background because it's hard to see on here. Right. At the moment, I'm making some steel. Um, I'm using this steel um, battery terminal, which is magnetic. It's actually steel, but it's plated with nickel. What I'm actually doing at the moment, I had some um, some steel things made at the engineering firm. Um, these actually are solid steel. They were done on a lathe. Uh, but I don't want to waste them because it cost me quite a lot of money to get these made. And these are going to be experimental for um, um, a coupling. Two of these pointing to towards each other, you get a concentration of magnetic field at that point. Now, um, I use these to make my new modified mould, which is a lot better now. You can't actually see, but if I open that up, there's a, there's a cavity inside there on the other side. Now, at the moment, I'm making these steel pins. These steel, well, out of the, um, this material. The way I do that is I wrap it around, um, I wrap it around a round uh, steel file, um, needle file, and then I roll it on my rubber mat with this, another rubber to get a nice round cylinder. <clears throat> I have to make uh, at least two or three more and get them um, sequentially smaller and push them all inside one another to form a magnetic path. You know, much like you see in a motor where it's got laminations. Uh, only these are made out of um, this steel tape. So anyway, basically, and at the point, the centre point, the centre point will actually be, the two will actually meet in the middle here. And my magnetic switch, um, the idea is to pull the magnetic field, deviate it, of course. From my experiments, I've actually found that it requires a very little amount of force to pull the magnetic field off course. Um, obviously, I'm not quite so sure exactly if this is going to work, obviously, but uh, it's, it's, it's an experiment anyway. Uh, but theoretically, it should. Because magnetism wants to take the path of least resistance. It wants to travel um, whichever direction it feels it's guided to do so, um, you know, to make a circuit, a magnetic field circuit. So, I mean, obviously, clearly, if you can make the two paths equal, so it wants to go either way, then it should be easily, quite easy to switch the path from one path to another, thereby removing the magnetic field from a coil, for example. So anyway, this is a small scale, a smaller scale type of experiment. <clears throat> So anyway, um, I've got to go and make some more of these pins. Now basically, oh wait a see. let me just stick my file on here. Um, see if I can get this on. Right, it's on my file. But basically, I have it on the rubber. Once I've, ro ro once I've got it round, uh, wrapped around the file, I just roll it like this and press quite hard and the file has quite grippy um, teeth on it obviously and it makes it nice and round so I can get to the point where when you look on the end it looks like a piece of a uh, pipe almost but it's slightly tapered Anyway, that's what I'm doing at the moment. As you can see, there's a slight flange, so that doesn't really matter. Um, there's, well, what do you call this? Corkscrew effect. That's not going to really matter too much, but the point is to put several of them inside one another to improve the magnetic path. So, anyways, back to it. I can't do this with one hand. <laughs>
I decided to make a, a mould out of my bobbin because these things are expensive now. Making the mould so that it's got the right depth, so I've had to stick these little pins in the bottom. And the idea is that I've super glued these little pins. It's got the minimum amount of footprint. So these pins can be either removed easily from the, the, the silicon mould or if they're stuck in the plastic, um, they'll, they'll be easily enough to remove from there anyway because they're only a tiny footprint. But they give me that little standoff space. So that's the amount of silicon that I'll be between the bottom of the bobbin and the actual bottom of my mould which is where I'm going to cast my silicon. And it also makes sure that my bobbin is perfectly um, perpendicular, you know, straight and not cockeyed. So when I put my bobbin inside, right, if I get it lined up with a circle, I drew a circle earlier on so I could get it properly lined up, and it's probably back up at the way of the bottom. Then I can pour my silicon in and I'll know that I've got it dead centre. And also, when I hold it up to the light, you'll see there's a tiny little lip of the, the actual bobbin sticking up all the way around evenly. Hang on, it's just getting this level all the way around. So I've got the same amount of lip standing up when I turn it around, so that's dead straight. So that when I put the lid on, once I've got the resin in there, I'm going to have a little bit of overspill, probably. But when I put the lid on, um, when I screw this lid down, obviously I won't have to move it once it's in there, I will have a nice flat top as well, because the lid is shiny and basically the, oh it's moved actually. It's a little bit loose, it's actually moved. But yeah, um you get the idea. Um, probably need to look a bit probably have to drop something in the bottom of there just to make it look a bit tighter so it doesn't slither around. But I've just super glued those pins so I'm gonna have to let them harden. <laughs> but you get you get the idea. Um basically if I put a thin I'm just gonna screw it again. If I put something thin at the bottom of there, it will just give me that little bit of tightness that I need so it doesn't slither around if it's still sliding a bit. But yeah, it should get a nice mould from that. So I'm going to have to let that uh, little copper pins that I've stuck in. I have to let the, the super glue harden on those. And I've polished it up and um, I actually sprayed the bobbin with um, primer. And I sanded it down so that it's nice and smooth. I can't actually feel those ridges anymore because obviously the ridges have been filled up with primer. Um, I'm not going to scrape it with my nail because I don't want to scratch it. So, but I've rubbed it down with um, um, emery paper. Actually, there's a little imperfection there. I need to rub that off, and it's just in that gap there. There's a little bit of paint I think sticking out so I have to rub that off before I actually cast the mould but yeah apart from that the only issue, the only thing I am concerned about is that uh, I might not be able to release the silicon from these little slots properly but I'm hoping that when I pull it uh, when you pull something it tends to stretch and it, it's more likely to come out it's normally when you're pushing something inside it compresses and tightens up so it should release okay all being well. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got the um, inside smooth as well. So uh, it's, it was getting a little bit costly having all these magnet holders made. And if this works well, I'm going to have a go at doing it on one of my um, bobbins as well, which is going to be a little bit more of a challenge because <clears throat> the, it's a little bit more of a challenge because the bobbins have got these. Um, yeah, it, it, they're not they don't they're not smooth so you can just pull it out like that. You I'd have to do it split, you know, like a split mold or something. Uh, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. In the meantime I'm just gonna leave that there with the pin standing up and let them uh, the super glue harden and uh
we'll see. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, right, I've got my mould made. Uh, put some plastic on. I'll just get the... Uh, I already loosed it earlier, but... Hang on, where's the end of it? I'll put a little bit of uh, plastic on here so it's easy to actually get it off. I waxed it as well so that it wouldn't stick too hard. Right, okay. Right, uh, okay, that's off. I'll put it in there. It's sticky, actually, the paper. It's a bit foil. It's, um, <coughs> what do you call it? Plastic film. Um, Right, well my mole's good, but yeah, obviously there's um there's a good bit of a spillover over my actual cast model, but yeah, I had to put a bit more in earlier because um I'd got some little air pockets and I wasn't happy, so I actually just went over it, skimmed over the top. So, but these these. These aren't really air pockets, see, that's where the actual item is underneath. Well, anyway, <clears throat> it's in a solid plastic container, so it's going to be a sturdy mould. And uh, as I say, I left a, uh, quite a big space underneath there, so, you know, where the, the silicon could attach well to these little, uh, the magnet holder slots. So. So anyway, it's a question now of uh, removing it. <clears throat> I mean, it's, I think it's hard enough to remove it, but I might. I really need an exacto knife, but we don't. They don't sell them in the UK. We get something similar. We get some. Um, you can get them from China, I suppose. But I've ordered uh, a very sharp knife, which I'm hoping will arrive um, soon. I can just trim it a little bit because my I've got a razor thing, but it's it's blunt as a heart, so it's not good. So yeah. Hmm. All right. So I've been trimming. Uh, I sharpened my knife a bit. Actually, I sharpened it on some ferrite, <laughs> ferrite rod uh, block. I uh, sharpened my knife on that, uh, and then I was. Gently saw in to trim it as much as I could. It's difficult. It's got some rough edges. It doesn't really matter though, because when I cast the mould, um, the important part is that uh, I can just rub down one side, and it's only going to be one side of the thing that wants rubbing down. And it's uh, it's this brush. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's about it for this video. Oops. Yeah, we have to. It's actually hard enough to. It's setting up now. Uh, I don't think tell it's setting up. It's I could trouble to pull this all out. Anyway. Oh right. Well, the I made the the resin in my uh, silicon mold. Well, obviously there's a bit of a spill there. Well, I rub that off once I get it out there. Sand it down, right? Because if I sand it down now, it'll damage my rubber mill because the rubber sticks to the envy paper. So what I'm going to do is now take this out of here and then turn the mould inside out, and that's what I did last time. Uh, I have to pause a minute because I can't get it out of here with one hand. <laughs> well, I've got it started. Uh, it's coming out. I'm going to drop it back inside again. Right. Now, I have to turn the mold inside out. And that's, unfortunately, that's another thing I can't really do with one hand. Well, I'll try a little bit. Because uh, I want to show you, I mean, this is the first time I've peel this back. Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually mixed magnetite with the resin, by the way, so I wanted to try it, an experiment. Because the magnetite is polarised by magnetism anyway. And I'm hoping that these um, 
slots are going to be right. Because I, the rubber tended to flop a bit towards the centre. And I didn't really, I wasn't able to line them up because I couldn't see it, but I couldn't see where they were. Yeah, because the resin went everywhere. But let's have a look. Yeah, that's peeping inside. I can't peel this all back with one hand, so I'm going to have to pause it. <clears throat> right, that's the first stage. It looks good, actually. There's a few little flaky bits on there, but that's nothing. It doesn't look, it doesn't look so far like there's any air bubbles, which is good. <coughs> the final stage, <coughs> getting the uh, little rubber parts out, that's going to be tricky. Now, before I do that, I'm going to have to somehow, I'll have to, I'm going to have to scrape some of this off with a knife or something, because the air won't be able to get in. And if the air can't get in, I can't pull the rubber out. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a bit tricky. I've got some goo on my hands as well. At least it's dry. Goo is gone now. Uh, right, so don't worry about the little holes. That's where I put the little anchor points. I don't want to rip my mould either. Anyway, let's see if I can get this out. Actually, I wonder... In my, oh, it, it is actually coming out, because I did wax it. It is coming. Yeah. It's coming. The wax seems to have done the job. It is coming. It's starting to rip my mould. I'm not pressing too hard either. <coughs> the middle part's going to be the tricky part, this bit. So I'm going to press on that, so... Let's see if I can get it loose. It's working. I'm just breaking, breaking that bit off. It's going. It's actually gooey. Oh, look at my hands. I have to wash my hands now. Look, it's definitely gone down so far. Uh, let's pull this a bit more. I'm going to have to pause the video. Yay! Oh, look at that. Oh, not bad. Now that's the other end. It's come out pretty well. Uh, so many air bubbles. I can't see any. The other end just wants. Oh, it's really sticky at the moment. <coughs> it's very sticky, so it, it needs to harden a bit longer. <coughs> but I have definitely got the form, and sanding that's not going to be a big problem. But it's it's worked. It has worked. I'm really happy with that. I've got some bits of flake sticking on it. I'm going to have to wash this in. Uh, it's stuck to my finger. Look. Let's see. <laughs> it's really sticky, and I'm going to have to stop the video because I, I'm going to ruin my phone if I get this on my phone. And meanwhile, my mould is intact. No damage. And anyway, I'm going to pop it back the right way inside, the right way around now. Watch. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> because uh, the longer I leave it like that, the, the bigger chance there is of it tearing. And uh, I'm going to have to, uh, it's a bit sticky inside, so I'm going to have to wash all that out later. Well, anyway, I'll let it dry out properly, and then the, the little black bits will flake off. Anyway, that worked. And my mould is in one piece. So I'll pop it back in here. I'll pop it back in my pot. So it maintains its shape. I did actually, you won't be able to see this, but I did actually stick some <coughs> needles all the way through in various places and I used a syringe to pump air to, to the back to help it, to me release it, to pop it out. And that worked. You know, by pushing pressure of air right to the base, it actually popped it. It helped me to get it out of the uh, plastic when I originally did it. Anyway, that's um, okay. Um, I'm going to sort my hands out now. Hmm. 
you know, I bought these plastic gloves a few weeks back, and I forgot about them. I should have been wearing them. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I learnt my last. So I'm wearing the plastic gloves now. But, yeah, I noticed there is some imperfections on the other side where where the actual flaps of the thing were a little bit too close to the inside wall. But that's not a big problem. I should be able to sort that out. I expected some glitches. But anyway, I'm going to have to file that edge down. But the trouble is it's too gooey at the moment. But it's probably a good time to use a knife or something to trim it off because that's probably what I really need to do right now. So let's have a go at that. <laughs> well, I've now got rid of most of the stickiness and I'm using wet and dry. And I'm basically just rubbing around until I get rid of all the, the, mon the monkey little bits that on the end. And, yeah, there is there is an imperfection in there. But it's not a serious one. It's it's slightly off angle, but I think I can live with it. But anyway, we'll see when I've done it. And um, I'm going to see if I can give some support to that particular silicon leg. Because it's just one leg. It's the um, one at the bottom. You see, there's a bit of breakthrough where it's come through the, to the inner wall. But it's not a major issue. I mean, it's a magnet holder, remember? It's holding the magnets. It's, it's not <laughs> for aesthetic looks, but yeah, I can live with that. It's probably actually due to the fact that there was probably um, not enough resin down there. But yeah, it's gonna. It's, it's certainly a lot harder than there's. Um, it's, I've got rid of the stickies of so the way it's not sticky anymore. I uh, put it in a bath of hot water with so hot soapy water and I was rubbing it with envy paper to get rid of all the external stickiness. I mean it would have gone away if I left it for twenty four hours or let it harden even more, I'll stick it in the oven, but the one one thing I learned about sticking these things in the oven is that things happen that I don't always want them to happen. For example, this resin can shrink. Well, I I don't mind it shrinking a bit. I haven't even tried my magnet in it yet. Let's see. Oh, look at that. It, it, it wants to stay in there. <laughs> well, let's see. Oh, yeah, it's working. <laughs> and because it's magnetite, it wants to stay in there. <laughs> Unlike the plastic ones, it, it kept falling out and I had to boost the... Well, that's, that's good. Because it's magnetite, it wants to stay in there, which is handy. <laughs> Oh, now I, I've got to stop the phone now while I finish this job off. <laughs> well, I'll pause. <laughs> well, I can see a lot more clearly now. The leg didn't need support. There was just not quite enough resin there. There's, if you look, it's fine and there's a gap. So, I had an air bubble. That's basically all it was. And I'm, I'm grinding away and it's actually looking really, really good. So I'm, I'm much more happy than I thought. So I'll just keep on going until I get rid of all the imperfections because trimming it with a knife or whatever, I could actually crack it. So I'm just going to do it nice and steady. And it's, it's a lot of effort, but I'm doing it gently. And because this is resin and magnetite, it's pretty hard stuff. So the emery paper gives a better finish as well. Probably could use order some thicker grit, actually. <laughs> Be a good idea. Okay, finito. That's come out really good. Actually, this is the side that's perfect, and out this side's got no flaws at all. But slight uh, pockets on the other side, but that's no biggie. I'm happy with that. It's come out pretty well. The little dimples there, that's where I put some pins so that it would stand about ooh, two extra an inch off the bottom of the mole so I could have enough silicone underneath to give it the leg support. So those little holes are intentional, but the air pockets there and there, those are the only really two imperfections. Oh, and that will put one there. Well, that's, that's negligible. Ne negligible. I can't say the word. Yeah, um, the inside's a bit sticky still, but 
by tomorrow that'll be hard anyway. It'll be really hard tomorrow. That's why I wanted to rub it down now because it's easier to work with when it's not as hard. Once it once it's hardened over 24 hours, it'll be rock solid. This 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 magnetite and resin is uh, really really hard. So anyway, um, yeah, my magnets will just pop in there hopefully. Let's uh, uh, let's see. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Uh, one more. Six. Look at that. They've all gone in. Easy, easy peasy, perfect tour. Can't be more happy about that. The fact that my magnets are just nicely snugly fitting in there. And I haven't tested this. Compare it, compared it to the um, 3D, 3D printed one yet. I haven't actually compared the magnetic field on the centre there. So let's find out. Uh, just do the file test. Oh yeah. Oh definitely, it's working. Magnet, I feel it right in the centre there. It's, uh, it's equalised, equal pull there. Oh, that's interesting. And I'm getting a much more even feel on the edge because of the magnetite. It's actually equalising that edge. That's that's what I really wanted there. I couldn't get that with the plastic. I couldn't get that effect with the plastic bobby, with the plastic magnet holders, because in the centre there was a there was a, a point right in the middle. There's still it, it's still more attraction here on the edges of the magnets, but in the centre here, it's how do I explain it? There was a there was a there was a, a latching point in the centre there. It sort of wanted to stay right in the middle. Well, it doesn't do that quite as much there. It's it's more even. Yeah. Ah, it'd be interesting to play around with that. Hmm. Yeah. So that's this is the. Um, I've got two more bobbins I've printed. Two more bobbins. And I'll have to have a go at making a fiberglass uh, resin bobbin as well. That's going to be a challenge because of the, um, yeah. I'm sure I can do it. I mean, if I can do it with this, um, I'll have to simply, um, when I make the mould, I'll have to make it so that I can cut it so that with a knife or something, so I can just open it up and pull it out, basically. I'm going to be setting the mould on its end like that. That's how I'm going to try it. That way I can pull the mould apart. So anyway, that's the way I'm going to try that, but I'm not going to do it that way. No, it's not going to get out, it's not going to be easy to get it out at all. Unless I fold it back like I did with this, that mould, this other mould, that I did with this one. But, uh, at least my uh, magnet holder is now heat proof <laughs> and waterproof, um, which is good. Uh, two bobbins. And this is my other magnet holder, the one that's in um, PLA. Yeah, and it's it's uh, porous. Yeah, I haven't touched. This is the other one which I haven't um, sanded down yet, and it's got magnets in. Um, yeah, well, this is a lot bigger than the other one. Uh, there's no point really making them up for this one because this was experimental one. But yeah, I like these slim line ones. I like the slim line ones. You've got more. You've got a closer access for the the bobbins. 
So, right, I think it's time to upload these videos. Thanks for watching.